I want to drill down on a business uh, aspect to what's going on in the province of Ontario. And uh, to do that, my buddy Dennis Mills is in. He's with RacingFuture.ca. Check out the website because he's had, uh, I guess, he's trying to impress upon people the importance of the business of horse racing for smaller communities where these tracks with the slots are located. And uh, it's been... Uh, talk of decimating this, and then there's a casino that's planned for Toronto, and that might also impact the overall equation. So I wanted to, under the rubric of all of these things, sort of uh, in a nice stew for a Monday morning, Dennis, welcome you back to the Oakley Show. Good morning. Nice to be here, John. All right. So, uh, you know, when I talk about, uh, we've discussed this in the past, the racing future in this province, there's also in the broader context a sense that the McGuinney Liberals are hanging rural Ontario out to dry. As a liberal yourself, what are you making? Uh, that? Listen, I think that the uh, liberals in Ontario have their priorities all wrong when it comes to the rural Ontario economy. I've been straight up about this. I believe that farmers and horses should be first and casinos should be second. I believe that the premier, while he's still got 40, 50 days left on the job, should be directing Paul Godfrey, OLG, to park all this hype and focus on casinos and uh, put the file to rest that deals with uh, uh, the men and women families who get up at 6 in the morning, muck their stalls, uh, raise their hay. A lot of them, by the way, are fans and supporters of your show. And I think it's incumbent upon those of us in the city that care about rural Ontario that we keep pressing the nerve of not only Dalton McGuinty, but also Tim Hudak, who has not taken a clear position on this, and Andrea Horvath, to say to Paul, farmers and horses First, casino second. And by the way, John, I would issue you a direct challenge. Mm. You have a couple of regular um, uh, interviewers on your show here, His Worship the Mayor, his brother, and uh, Adam Vaughn. Oh, yeah. I think that uh, this, I've listened to them uh, on your show Uh about their views, and most of them are uh, not on the same page, but I think that there's one area where Adam Vaughn would uh, hold up uh, his hand and cheer for Rob Ford, and that is let's make sure we look after uh, rural Ontario and Woodbine Sport and Entertainment, which, by the way, is in the mayor's zone in Etobicoke. Well, that's true. Uh, So what's the deal then with Woodbine? Because, I mean, there's talk of a casino, and some say that's the place to put it. Vaughn included amongst them. I think the mayor and his brother are kind of still, uh, they want to see it on city land so we can derive the tax benefit that they suggest is somewhere in the ballpark of 150 to 200 million. Now, let me just back up. Paul Godfrey, what's his rush to get a casino in downtown Toronto? Well, well, this is where I really uh, have a big sort of problem with the elected leadership, whether it be at the municipal level or the provincial level. The, the men and women who are elected in this community should be giving direction to the unelected people who they've put in jobs to sort of follow their public policy direction. And it seems to me that Paul, who I've never had a bad word with, is sort of getting ahead of the elected people in our community. And I think we need to uh, prick their conscience and sort of tell them, look, get charge of this and say there are a lot of, there are hundreds of thousands of people in rural Ontario that are being devastated, while there are literally dozens of lobbyists running around this town, pressing municipal people, pressing provincial people. Let's all focus on the casino. And by the way, the casino won't be generating uh, revenue for the Treasury of Ontario for at least three years when the slots at racetracks program puts $1,200,000,000 a year uh, into the Treasury. Well, yeah, and the idea there was this was a revenue share, although it was couched by the Liberals as being a subsidy and or Paul Godfrey as well with the OLG, uh, he after all runs it, uh, is the idea that somehow he is taking his cues from the Liberals because the coffers are stripped and they need the money, or do you think he's promoting this of his own volition? Well, I look, we all have enormous respect for the uh, work that Paul has done in our city, bringing the Blue Jays, trying to bring NFL, bringing us the Dome Stadium. I mean, he's done a phenomenal job. And Paul, I'm a Toronto guy, Paul's a Toronto guy, but I think sometimes we can be 2416 centric. Uh, the reality is that there's a big economy and a lot of people beyond the 905 space. In fact, a lot of the 905 space uh, is uh, has got a rural component to it. And so I think that it's incumbent upon us to realize that there are a lot more people that live in our province than the people that just live in Toronto. And I think that 
uh, it's the duty of our elected people to sort of remind uh, people like Paul, hey, back off. Casinos are second until we solidify and sustain and uh, put back on a proper pathway the business in the province of Ontario that was bringing in a billion two hundred million to our treasury. So, in a perfect case scenario, you'd like to see. Obviously, the timeline would be different, but uh, you'd like to see the slots retained at the tracks across Ontario. Well, this is a very important point you've just raised. The slots will remain at the racetracks. The slots will remain. Where the provincial government has done a poor job, and, and OLG, in communicating, the slots will remain, but we want to cut a better deal with the racetracks in terms of getting more money to the Treasury. It's no secret to anybody in the city now that there were certain racetracks in this city where a lot of money went out to the private ownership of those that were operating the racetracks, legally, but that was never the original public policy purpose. So the government is saying, stop. We're going to cut a new deal with you with your slots at racetracks. We want the business to sustain itself and grow, but we're also going to make sure if we put public money back into the sector, it's going to stay within the sector and it's not going to go out the back door. So in other words, you've got to sustain the industry with the monies that you're making off the slots and don't just privateer from it. Well, and and, uh, and, uh, make sure that uh, the monies that are being in the partnership go in to support the breeders, and the owners, and, and you have to make sure that the racetrack operators have a, sus, a, suspicion, a, sus, a sufficient amount to sustain themselves as we transition into new ways to grow the business. All right. So uh, right now it's an 80-20 split with the province and the tracks. Uh, what do you suggest? Well, well, hold it. It's not just 20 for the tracks. It's 10 go to purses uh, and 10 go to the racetrack operators. And I think that everyone has to put some water in their wine. I mean, the teachers have, uh, uh, I guess they need to put a little more, but uh, the doctors, they've cut a deal. And so I'm not saying we shouldn't belt tighten. Farmers aren't saying that. They work seven days a week, as you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but right now, because they're out there and we're down here where everything happens, we got to put focus on our leadership to have these guys sit down in a room, cut a deal within the next two weeks. And it's interesting with the uh, upcoming liberal leadership race for late January, some of the the people, the aspirants, have already made some noise to the effect that they're not going to discount rural Ontario. Uh, Are you heartened by that? uh, Racing Future is determined to make sure that every liberal leadership campaign takes a public position, farmers and casinos first, farmers and horses first, casinos second, and we really want to get Tim to take, Tim Hudak to take the same position, and also Andrea Horvath. And if that happens, then collectively they can direct Paul, cut a deal, and let's get this thing back on the right track. And finally, the timeline's uh, very sensitive in that the racing season that we're projecting ahead to in 2013, I mean, uh, the farmers, the the horsemen have to set themselves up for that and know what their budgets are going to be, correct? Well, and you have to lock in the dates to know whether or not you're going to stay here and operate or you're going to leave town. All right, so this is why it's... Uh, top of mind and very important insofar as the future of rural Ontario to a large extent is concerned. RacingFuture.ca is a website. Dot com. Dot com. My apologies. RacingFuture.com to, uh, will direct you to that website. Dennis Mills is the point man on that file and uh, holding the Liberals to account here in the province as well as the other parties. And don't forget, set it up. Adam Vaughn and Rob Ford. Let's see them holding hands on this issue. All right. Well, they want to see something up at Woodbine to be sure if that's going to be the uh, situation. So, Dennis, uh, good luck with this one. We'll keep pressing the case because I believe rural Ontario was getting the short end of the stick in the equation as we understood it. So this is a file that we'll continue to delve into and uh, make sure something happens satisfactorily for uh, all parties concerned. Thanks for your